We're also going to be in Luke chapter 7. But let's start off in Luke chapter 4. And the Lord has instructed that we begin today declaring, eliminating poverty and financial lack. Eliminating. It didn't say addressing. It didn't say discussing. It didn't say learning how to overcome. The Lord said, no, eliminating poverty and financial lack. Now, let me just tell you, as the Lord was impressing me and and dealing with me, showing me what he wanted to do in this series that we're beginning here. This is all part, by the way, of setting your house in order. This is important for things to come in our future. We need to lay hold of God as our provider. We need to detach our faith from the idolatry of the world system and connect with Him from the core of our hearts to be ready for things that are coming in the future. But as the Lord was dealing with me about these things, He also impressed me that there would be people who were coming that while we're dealing with this area of provision, they would be desperate for healing. And I became keenly aware that there would be people that would be sitting and thinking, oh, we're talking about financial provision, but I need healing. How many of you know if you're desperate for healing, any other subject seems unimportant? If you're desperate for financial provision, any other subject can seem unimportant. And so what the Lord impressed me about and reminded me about is this time last year, we started a series called Healing Power. The Lord kicked off the the year last year about divine healing, about his divine healing. And so he reminded me about that. And I didn't put the correlation together that they both started in January. But I want to put up on the screens, we're, we're taking this Healing Power series and we're cutting the price in half. Anybody that needs this for $20, you can get all these messages that will speak to you and bring. I'm telling you, it's a powerful series. I remember when the Lord was dealing with me about that and stirred me up. And it was, it was the equivalent of eliminating poverty and financial lack, but in the physical healing realm, particularly for physical healing in our bodies. How many of you know Jesus came to heal us too? Didn't he? He came to save us. He came to heal us. He also came to provide. So if that's something of interest to you, we wanted to do that to be a blessing to you. Luke chapter four. Oh man, I can't wait to get into this. Are you ready to receive from the Lord today? All right. Let's all read the 16th through the 24, 21st verse, verses 16 to 21 from Luke chapter four. Part of this is Jesus speaking himself, but it's all the inspired word of God. So as we read, let's just charge this atmosphere with God's word and read it with faith. Nice and loudly, we're going to read from the New King James Version. If you don't have that particular translation, that's okay. But if you would, please follow along on the screen so we can all read the same words just as we read aloud. Luke 4, verses 16 through 21, reading loudly and together. Let's read. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, And recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Let's stop there. Now notice again. Verse 18, Jesus comes to the synagogue. They hand him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He doesn't just start reading from the beginning. He doesn't say, well, let's do it right here. The Bible says he found the place. He had a particular prophecy that needed to be read, that needed to be preached that day. How many of you know God knows exactly which word needs to be brought today? 
God knows exactly what we need to hear today. And the Bible says Jesus found the place where it was written. And then he began to read from what we now know is Isaiah 61. But he said in verse 18, notice again, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now notice, the Spirit of the Lord, so you, you can see the Trinity in this passage. Here's Jesus talking, he's the Son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus the Son is talking, and he says, The Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, of the Lord, that's God, the Father. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. There's the Trinity right there. And it goes on to say, For He has anointed me to... And then He lists off some things that the power of the Holy Spirit was given Him to accomplish. The power of the Holy Spirit had been given to Jesus to accomplish certain things and to help people with certain things. And so He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. How many of you can see needs are being met? And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. You ever been under pressure? People putting pressure on you? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he began to say, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, have you ever read through this, and maybe you're thinking about a financial need, and you begin to think that the people that have financial needs got gypped? Because look what he said. He said, man, the brokenhearted, they get healed. And the blind, they get sight. And the oppressed, they get liberty. And the poor, they get a sermon. <laughs> you ever think about that? Look at that. And you begin to think, man, what? A sermon? How about some money? <laughs> How many of you know that doesn't seem like the answer? To what we need. Lord, no, we need help. Yeah, listen to this. Huh. I don't need a sermon. I need help. But how many of you know that God is the great helper? Isn't that right? If anybody knows what kind of help you need is God. Now this, this seeming reality or disappointment is even more true when you get over to Luke chapter 7. Look over Luke chapter 7, and let's begin in the 19th verse. And this is where John the Baptist had been thrown into prison. And you know, John the Baptist knew Jesus was the Messiah. And he had pointed him out and declared it. That's the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God right there. He knew that. But how many of you know, you get into prison, you can begin to be discouraged. And so many people didn't realize that Jesus was coming twice. The first time he came to minister to us and to die and to be raised from the dead. But the second time he comes, he's going to come and he's going to set things in order. How many of you know he's going to dominate when he comes back the next time? He's going to deliver his people from oppression completely. And he's going to take over the governments of the world. He's the king of kings. See, but in the prophecies of the Old Testament, the people that were trying to discern these things didn't realize there were two comings. And so they were expecting Jesus in his first coming to do all of that. And when it, when it all wasn't happening, they began to wonder, well, is that really him? Because the prophecy of the Messiah is that he's going to do everything. And they didn't catch that these things could be divided with a span of time. So notice John the Baptist, he begins to wonder if Jesus is the, the Messiah. And it says in verse 19, And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Verse 21, At, And that very hour he cured many infirmities, afflictions, and evil, evil spirits, and, many blind he, uh, and to many blind he gave sight. Now notice verse 22. And Jesus answered and said, Go tell John the things you have seen and heard. Now listen to this. The blind... What? 
see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The poor Does that seem a little funny to you? (laughs) How about the poor got some money? Does this seem a little funny to you when you read it at first? It's like, wait a minute. You were doing so good there, Lord. (laughs) I mean, you had a pattern going. Just stay with the sequence. Stick with the cadence. Don't mess it up. But how many of you know, he didn't mess it up. I said he didn't mess it up. But it seemed, how many of you understand? It seemed like he did, right? Lord, hey, come on now. A sermon. A sermon? But what I want you to see is a couple of things. First of all, sight is the answer to a blind man. Healing to walk is the answer to a lame man. Hearing is the answer to a deaf man. Cleansing is the answer to a leper. A dead man needs to be raised. And listen to what Jesus said. I'm going to tell you how we solve poverty. The poor man needs the gospel. Needs the gospel. He didn't change what he was saying at all. He wasn't saying the blind gets their need completely resolved. The deaf man gets his need completely resolved. The dead man gets raised up. The leper gets completely cleansed. And the poor man, we're we're going to encourage you because it won't be like that in heaven. Just suck it up for now. No, no. How many of you know that even though he changed what he was saying, he has, Jesus always has a good reason why he says what he says. He was not backing off from supplying need and resolving that problem. But he had to say it a different way, and I'm going to teach you why. You're going to find out today. Why did he say that differently? Did he back off from actually committing himself to completely resolve it like he did all the others? And he didn't. He didn't back off a bit. But I'm going to show you exactly why. He had to change it on that one. But still, the end result is a complete resolution, a complete solution of all poverty and lack in our lives. But we just have to have understanding from the Lord. Now, before we get there, let me tell you this. It wasn't only the poor that had the gospel preached to them. That's the way everybody receives. In fact, look back at chapter 4 now. Let me show it to you. Sometimes we just read over these things and we don't pay close attention and so we don't catch them. We don't catch it. Listen to this. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach. If you have a pen, underline that. To preach. He anointed me to preach. You need to know something about Jesus. The first thing He was anointed to do was to preach. Not to heal. Not to deliver. Not to save. The first thing He was anointed to do was to preach. In fact, you'll find if you read carefully through the Gospels, you'll find that everywhere Jesus went, he didn't start with healing. Jesus did not walk into hospitals and places where they had many sick people and say, duck, 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 goose, you're not getting healed. Duck, 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 (laughs) goose. No, no, no. Jesus did not walk around tapping heads to heal people. Let me tell you what he did. Everywhere he went with just... A few exceptions. Jesus went in and he taught in the synagogues. He preached out in the streets. And people heard the word. And it brought faith to their heart. And they came to him to be healed. And they got healed. He did not come in and start healing people. He came in and started preaching and started teaching. In fact, in Matthew 4.23, it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. It says the same thing in Matthew chapter 9. He came in teaching, preaching, and healing. Not healing, teaching, and preaching. He didn't heal and then explain it. No, he started off teaching. Teaching in their synagogues. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And then healing. Why? 
Because if you don't teach and preach, the people don't have the faith to receive. And so he had to teach and preach. And that's the way it was for everybody, not just the poor. Not just the poor. So look at this. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Listen to this. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim. He didn't say to liberate the captives. He said to proclaim liberty to the captives. Didn't he say that? Guess what? They got a sermon too. Amen. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And notice this. And what does and mean? I'm not done with this sentence yet. Isn't that right? And recovery of sight to the blind. So the way that that sentence is made up, Jesus said, I have been anointed to proclaim liberty to the captives and to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind. Guess what? The blind man got a sermon too. How do you think he got healed? How do you think he even knew that Jesus could heal? Unless Jesus would have stepped up and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And has anointed me to bring recovery of sight to the blind. And somebody heard that and one blind person said, that's dumb. It's ridiculous. Who does he think he is? And the other blind guy said, he thinks he's the Messiah. And I don't know why, but I believe it. And one blind guy sat there and the other one got got up and went and got healed. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so Jesus went, and look, he was proclaiming and preaching and ministering, and that's how he got it to everybody. The result was the blind man saw, the deaf man heard, the leper was cleansed. That's the result. But how did it come? He preached. He preached. See, he took the words of God, these inspired words. Do you know how powerful the words of God are? Do you remember the way the whole Bible started? God said, let there be light. In fact, in the Hebrew, it just says it sort of like this. Light be and light was that's it light be and everything that we can see now all matter the heavens the earth everything all galaxies created by the word of god he spoke and bam it happened his words are powerful and so jesus now is coming and taking the words of god full of his power And he's taking them into his heart, ingesting them. And then he's speaking them out. And they go into people's ears and into their hearts. And before you know it, they start to believe it. And that faith inside causes them to come and say, well, I believe you'll heal me. And bam, the power of God is released. This is the way it works. See, it wasn't just the poor. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recover your sight to the blind. Look at this. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Look at the beginning of verse 19. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. How many of you can see all the way through there? He's preaching and proclaiming. And that's why their answer comes. So in chapter 7 when he says the blind see, how did they see? He preached it, they believed it, and they got it. Now why didn't he just say that for the poor man? And just say they got it. Let me tell you why. Because provision is different from all the others. Provision is different from all the others. For example, you take a blind man, been blind, he could have been blind all of his life, but he comes today and the power of God hits him and he gets healed. Well, when he comes back tomorrow, it's talking about how good it is to see. How many of you know he doesn't need to be healed of blindness today? He got healed yesterday. That's over. That's done. The lame man, he comes walking in the next day. He doesn't need to be healed today. He got healed yesterday. That's done. The leper, his skin is cleansed. It's good now. He comes in the next day praising God. He doesn't need to be healed again today. He's already been healed yesterday. But the poor man could have had all of his bills on his desk paid. Fed his family that day. But guess what? Something else comes in the mail tomorrow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The kids are hungry again tomorrow. Provision is not like all the rest. Once you get healed, you don't need to be healed every day. You got healed. That thing's gone. But you do need provision every day. Have you ever noticed when Jesus' disciples came and said, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, all right, tell you how to pray. Say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. See, seek first the kingdom of God. Then he said, say this. Give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say healing. Why? You may not need healing, but everybody needs daily bread. Everybody needs provision. 
and we don't just need it once and then it's solved. No, you need to learn to tap into his provision every day. And so he said, put that in the prayer. Put that in the prayer. (laughs) Amen. How many of you know, God knows we have needs. God knows we have need for provision. And he knows it's not resolved. If Jesus reached in his pocket and asked the guy, how much you need? How much you need? Oh, man, I need a hundred bucks. Quick. Here, I got a hundred dollar bill right there and gave it to him. How many of you know that guy will be back tomorrow? I need another hundred. Maybe 150. How many of you know you don't solve that problem with money? And so Jesus is so wise. He didn't say the poor got a wad. We don't need a wad. Amen. You know what a wad is? Some of you looking at me like, like a what? That's not dope, is it? No, that's not dope. I'm talking about a wad of cash. You don't need that. Peter and John says, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I'll give you. Alms, I need alms because I'm lame and I can't walk. No, that's not what you need. Here's what you need. You need to be healed. Go get a job. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Got that boy up. See, Jesus knows what we need. We don't need money. And as long as we just think money, 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 we're missing it. We don't need money. We need the provision of the Lord. And he said, pray this. Give us this day our daily bread. So the Lord knows we need provision every day. He knows we need provision, and he's trying to help us not just to give us what we need today because tomorrow we'll be in need again. He's trying to give us something that will sustain us every day, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. We get to the end of the month, and we're not out of money. Why? Because every day we're receiving from the Lord. That's why this is different than all the others. And he couldn't just say the poor receive money because that doesn't solve it. The next day they need more. Kids are hungry again. Amen. So he said the poor have the gospel preached because the gospel is the answer to a lack and poverty. The gospel is the answer to poverty and deficiency. The gospel, the gospel. Now, let me show you something that really blessed me when the Lord pointed this out to me. Go back to chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to... God gave Jesus the Holy Spirit to do some things. And He listed off a number of different things. How many of you know all of those things are good? All of them. But I want you to notice this. Listen. Oh, this is good. You ready for this? What's the first thing he said he was anointed to do? Preach the gospel to the poor. That's not the last thing. Somebody will say, you know, you shouldn't get it. You shouldn't worry about it. You shouldn't ask about that. You shouldn't ask God about that. You know, that's not important. You need to focus on the Lord. You know, you need to focus on the Lord. You shouldn't be asking for that. God doesn't care about money. Listen, you don't, Jesus didn't come to give us provision and help. No, focus on the Lord. Just just seek the kingdom of God. Don't worry about all that. Don't worry about all that. Okay, you say anything you want to, Jack, but I'm going to listen to Jesus. And Jesus says, let me tell you something. God the Father in heaven poured out the Holy Spirit on me to bring you some things. And let me tell you the first thing. To preach the gospel to all of you that are struggling financially. I got some good news for you. I got some good news for you. So see, your mind can tell you and somebody else can tell you, oh, that's, that's way down on the list. That's not important to God. Oh, yeah? That's the first thing Jesus communicated that he was anointed to do. Now, listen. It's not the most important thing. I said it's not the most important thing. How many of you know the most important thing is that we get delivered from our sins? The most important thing is we get born again. Man, we want to be in heaven with the Lord for eternity. That's the most important thing. Well, don't you think Jesus knows that? Poor Jesus. You know, he'd only been in the ministry for a short period of time. This was right at the beginning. How many of you know he knows that? He knows it's not the most important thing. But how many of you know he put it first? Why? Why? Let me tell you something about our good God. He knows what we need, 
in totality, but he also knows what's hurting us right now. You know, you have a child and you tell the child, now don't run out there in the street. Don't you do it. Don't you run out there in the street. And they, they take off out there and they trip and they hit their face on the asphalt and scrape their face up, their nose off, and they get up, they turn around, and they start running towards you. You don't get your belt out. Yeah, you don't disobey me. Yeah, I'm going to give you what you need right here. You don't get your belt out. You don't get the belt out. Yes, they disobeyed. And yes, we got to deal with that. What do you do? Come here. Come on. Come here. Come here. Why do you do that? Because they're hurting. That's why. Because they're hurting. Our God is a tender God. Our God is a good God. And when he sees his children under stress, when he sees his children with lack, yes, there are other things that are more important. But to him, there's nothing more important than me helping you right where you are. Come here. How many of you know you can sometimes be under so much financial stress and pressure, you can't even hear anything else? It's not necessarily a hard heart. It's just being under so much pressure. I can't even focus. I got all this stuff I got to do. And let me tell you, Jesus is very tender. And he says, listen, the spirit of God is on me. And he's anointed me to come. I got some good news for you that are struggling financially. I got some good news for you that are hurting. And not only that, but I'm going to help the blind man. And I'm going to help the, the lame man. And how many of you know the lame man got healed? But how many of you know there are different kinds of lame too? You may be walking, but you're still lame, bro. <laughs> how many of you know Jesus will heal you from that too? Isn't that right? <laughs> Amen. What's the first thing that Jesus said he was anointed to bring? The gospel to the poor. First thing. I said the first thing. Say it. The first thing. Did I say that? Don't you walk out and say, yeah, Pastor Jerry says the first. You're going you to make me get on your case. Don't provoke. Don't get me started. <laughs> Listen, Jesus said that. Jesus said that, didn't he? First thing, Jesus said the first thing he was anointed to do. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Psalm 23, the beloved psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be sick. Is that what he said? Is that what he said? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not have sin. Is that what he said? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not go to hell. Is that what he said? We know that's important. But how many of you know the first thing? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not lack. Why? I've got somebody looking out for me. Man, I'm a part of his fold. I've got a shepherd watching over me, and he leads me to green pastures of provision. This is right in the Bible. God's trying to show us, look, look, look. Fear not, little flock, for it gives your father great pleasure to give you the kingdom. We have been lied to by people that want to make it sound like God doesn't care anything about that. And because they teach us that, then we even feel guilty coming to God and asking him about it. And here Jesus said that he's anointed to do it. It's the first thing he mentioned. I got some good news for you guys that have been struggling. You don't have to struggle anymore. You don't have to struggle anymore. Why? Your father loves you. Oh, and he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. I declare over you today that this lie that has been planted in your heart, that God doesn't care about this part of your life, dies. And that you realize that you have a very tender-hearted God tender-hearted God who loves you with everything he's got. And it's the first thing Jesus said he was anointed to do. It's the first thing. Now listen, the gospel is the power of God to eliminate poverty and lack in our lives. Let me say it again. The gospel is the power of God. Let me say it like this. The preaching of the gospel is how poverty and lack gets eliminated. The preaching of the gospel. 
Taking the words of God that are so powerful, like let there be light and there was light. Taking those words and declaring those words right straight from the text of Scripture. They don't need to be altered. They're so potent and powerful. Just take it and declare them to be real and true. And those words coming into our ears go into our hearts and begin to shake the very foundation of the strongholds of poverty that have been in our hearts. That have been limiting us from receiving the provision of the Lord that's right there. If you could close your eyes and look into the spirit realm, you'd see the provision's right there. It's right there. It's not far away. It's not in heaven. It's right there. It's already been allocated for you. But you can't see it with fear. You have to see it with your faith. And then you reach out and you receive it. And there it is. And there it is. So God speaks his word to us. And the word is the power that brings it to pass. Let me remind you of what Romans 1.16 says. Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But notice again, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Notice the language. He didn't say it reveals the power of God. He didn't say it declares the power of God. He didn't say it explains the power of God. He said the gospel is the power. That is the power. You want to know what the power is to change it? The gospel. I'm not ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power. When I preach this gospel, people are born again. Isn't that right? How many of you know being born again is a miracle? For your spirit on the inside that was dead to now be birthed into the family of God in all righteousness? And purity, sinlessness, that's a miracle. And you walk around with the same body you had before. You walk around with the same mind you had before. But your spirit is in the family of God and a recipient of the inheritance that comes through Jesus. And you're walking around with that right to receive. Unlike anybody else on the earth. The born-again person has a right to receive because he's in the family of God. That's a miracle. How did that miracle happen? I'll tell you how it happened. Somebody preached the gospel. The words of God came out of their mouth and came into somebody's ears and down in their heart. And before you know it, that person begins to believe something that really sounds too good to be true. God would love me? There's a God that would forgive me? And deliver me and give me a complete fresh start. And then provide for me and heal me and take care of me. And direct me and use my life. Me? That sounds too good to be true. That's why it's called the gospel, brother. It's the good news. It's the good news. But you see those words were spoken. They come into the heart. and mm, Something inside says, man, I don't have to be like I was anymore. I don't have to live like this anymore. Man, God's called me up there. God's called me to something different. And inside, you believe it to the point that there is a change of action. You open up your big mouth and you say, I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe he was raised from the dead. And Paul said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, man, bam. You will be saved. You're converted on the inside. You, with your own mouth, brought a miracle to pass. It didn't happen when God wanted it to happen. It happened when you did it. Because somebody preached the gospel to you. And this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, listen... This resolves the poverty issue. This resolves the lack issue. You need to hear this gospel. You need to hear the good news about how God provides for you now. It needs to get into your ears and down into your heart. And before you know it, man, I said, I believe that. I don't have to live this way anymore, being under stress and under pressure. And you believe it, and you begin to open up your big mouth and begin to say, God is my provider. And you stop talking like this. Well, we can't afford that. We can't afford that. You know, we just don't have enough money. You know, we're, we're behind. We're in the red. We're behind. We can't afford that. We can't afford it. You know, it's because, you know, we just don't have the money for that. We don't have the money. And, and, and all of a sudden, your heart will catch your mouth talking as if you have no God. 
Even if you don't have the money in the bank. I got a different account. See, you got to believe it though. And you don't believe it until you hear the gospel enough to shake the core of your being. To where you don't believe what you see anymore. I believe what you said. I believe what you said. And then you open up your mouth and you begin to thank God. It's not going to be like this for me. See, let me, how do I know this? Let me tell you, years ago, years ago, way back when I didn't even have a job, looking for a job, man, I heard the gospel. I began to be convinced, man, I'm in the kingdom. Everybody else, all these other people looking for a job, well, I don't, I, oh, all right, whatever. I'm in the kingdom. I'm a child of God. And the Lord supplies my need. I knew, man, I heard this gospel and kept listening and listening and listening. Let me tell you what. I knew at that point, I can never be poor. I can never be poor. I found out who I was. See, only the gospel will do that. See, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, I'm going to change that situation through the gospel. I'm going to change that situation through the gospel. To the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. You want to know what the answer is? This is it. So don't think, oh, we just get a sermon? No, no. You get the gospel. And I'm telling you, it comes into your ears, and it shakes everything, and filters out everything that has been stopping the flow of the provision of God in your life. And before you know it, it's like, hey, 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 look, it's flowing. Look, it's flowing. How'd that happen? The gospel had to change something inside. I know we think, oh, the problem's out here. The problem's in here. The problem's in here. If he can get it through you, he can get it to you. But he's got to get it through in here first. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power. Do you remember Deuteronomy 8, 18? And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as as it is this day. It is he who gives you the power it is he who gives you power to get wealth who does god now don't think he gives you the power to to be greedy he gives you the power to be materialistic have the love of money deceitfulness of riches of course not that would be him giving you the power to be condemned those things destroy no but notice he knows you need blessing he knows you need provision and he gives you the power what is the power it's the gospel It's the word of God. It's him speaking words to you. You believe it. You receive. And the power of God begins to provide your needs. Not your boss. Not the company. Not other people. God. God. See, the gospel points you to him. 